Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's episode is all about the new, whoa, <laughs> the cap wasn't on and I almost just dropped it. That would have been disastrous. This is the new Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I purchased this off of Sephora during the VIB sale and I've been playing with it. I wanted to give you my thoughts. I also wanted to apply it on camera and actually do like a full day wear test with you. I thought that was really important considering I have dry skin. I don't normally use a finishing powder. I feel like it usually kind of dries out my skin. But I wanted to give you guys like a first-hand look at uh, my skin with this powder on and then we can kind of talk about my thoughts at the end of the day. So if you're interested in hearing more about this powder, then just keep on watching. So this powder is uh, $46. Uh, I purchased it off of Sephora. It's now available on Beautylish and some other retailers. I'll link everything down below. So this is a translucent setting powder. So when I first used this, I used this as a setting powder. I did not like it as a setting powder at all. What I was surprised about in terms of this powder is that it has like a little bit of, I don't want to say sparkle, but there's a little bit of sheen to this powder. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on my finger there. It's so hard. Uh, when it comes to powder, but it has a little bit of a sheen to it. This powder is so, so soft. And if you don't mind like a little bit of sheen to your powder, you probably won't mind using this as a setting powder. But for me, I like using a matte setting powder because then I feel like it's not kind of interfering with anything. Anyway, so I used it as a setting powder, did not like it. It set my products down fine. It worked beautifully. I just didn't like the finish that it gave my skin. So then I started using it as sort of a finishing powder, sort of like a last step to my uh, makeup routine. And this is not something that I normally do, but I did like the kind of sheen and the softness of this powder and I thought, it'll probably work. So um, I used a number of different powder brushes and <laughs> I have quite a few. <laughs> so I have the Sonia G uh, Face One brush. This is one of my favorites because it has a flat top and you can really buff with this. I really like this one. I also use the Chikahoto uh, powder brush. I think this is the Z1. It's actually not printed on here. I think this is a Z1 brush. This is a very, very soft squirrel haired brush and I liked it for applying the powder, but I liked using the Sonia G to actually buff it in, to like work it into the skin. So this worked nicely and if you're someone that just likes kind of a nice soft veil of powder, this kind of brush would work along with something like the Surat uh, face powder brush. Again, I'll link everything down below. I think this is called face powder brush. These are very similar. The shape of the Surat, it's a little bit pointier, um, but this worked well also. But again, if you just want to kind of a soft veil of the powder, if you just kind of wanted to let it just sort of sit on top of your skin, these brushes were really, really great. Um, and then I have two brushes that kind of fell in between. They, they left a nice veil on the skin, but you could also use these to buff in. I just didn't think they were as effective as the Sonia G. So that's the La Mer powder brush and then the Hourglass uh, powder brush. So these are both uh, synthetic hair brushes, unlike the others I mentioned, which all have natural hair. So these, I thought, applied a nice veil of the powder, but... Uh, but when I went to kind of go buff it in, it wasn't quite as effective as the Sonia G. Uh, probably because of the shape. I think this flat top just really works for me, maybe uh, because of the way that I hold the brush. But these kind of fell in between for me, between the, the squirrel hair brushes and the Sonia G in terms of application. Left a nice veil and you could kind of start buffing in, but I didn't feel like it finished the job. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply this powder with the uh, Sonia G Face One brush since it's my favorite. I'm not sure if I even showed you guys the product yet, but here is the tub and it has the beautiful gold uh, case here and it has this uh, sifter in the shape of an H, which is pretty cool. Now my one issue with this is it's like bold out and so you kind of want to use this bowl to kind of load up your brush with the powder but it's hard to get the powder in here without kind of making a mess. So you end up kind of having to pour it out a little bit and it's just, I don't know, it's just like a little bit difficult. It's a little bit difficult to use. I wish it had uh, like a mesh top, like the Viseart uh, Seamless Powder that kind of has like a mesh net. I like that because then you can just sort of dip your brush in, tap off whatever excess right back into the container and then keep working. This particular sifter just, I don't know, I haven't found like the best way to do it and also because this cap has 
um, like a raised part to it to kind of hold down the powder when you screw it on. So what I have been doing is just loosely capping this and then shaking it <laughs> a little bit and I'm able to get like a little bit of powder in the cap and a little bit in the bowl here. This powder is incredibly, incredibly fine. So I have all of my makeup on and again I've been using this as a finishing powder instead of a setting powder. So I have a little bit of it on my uh, face one brush here and I'm just gonna stamp it onto my cheeks and then I'm gonna go ahead and buff it in. So there is the powder basically on like the lower half of my face. I just wanted to kind of give you a comparison between like my forehead and the rest of my face here. I think what I like the most about this powder is that it is very, very blurring. I think it just kind of gives, just like the name suggests, it gives your skin this sort of beautiful, beautiful veil. And as someone that has um, dry skin, uh, sensitive skin, this finishing powder step is definitely not something that I do normally. I've always never really understood why you would do it um, unless you had oily skin. If you really kind of wanted to set down your makeup and make sure it really didn't budge and kind of like blend everything in. And for me personally, if I want to kind of make sure all of my products are blended, I just take a clean kind of powder brush and just run it over um, all of the areas that I think maybe need to be worked together a little bit more. I don't generally grab a powder and put it on top. So this is definitely a step that I have not been accustomed to doing. It's not part of my routine. It's not a habit of mine. But with this powder, I can kind of see why you would want to do it because it gives a really, really beautiful blurring effect. And I don't feel like it makes my skin look dry. It just makes it look... Um, kind of like velvety, kind of like it just has this very, very sheer layer of like gauze over it. So I really do appreciate that look. And I just want to mention that I am using this over my Clay de Peau foundation, which is incredibly emollient. So I feel like this is a foundation that can handle like an extra layer of powder on top. If I used like a powder foundation, <laughs> I probably wouldn't use yet another layer of powder on top. Or if I used kind of like a a mattifying uh, foundation I probably wouldn't use um, or if I use kind of like a natural velvety matte type of foundation I probably wouldn't use a finishing powder I probably wouldn't go through this step but with a foundation like this I feel very comfortable uh, doing this I don't feel like my skin's just gonna dry out by the end of the day so I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the rest of my uh, face here Okay, so there is the powder applied to my entire face. Again, I love the blurring effect that it gives. It is an incredibly, and I think I've already said this a, a gazillion times, it is an incredibly finely milled powder. It's very, very soft to the touch. So for me personally, you only need a little bit. I feel like this is the kind of powder, if you go on just another layer too much, it starts to build up and starts to look uh, too thick. And I find that actually with a lot of hourglass powders, they're like pressed powders, the ambient uh, lighting powders, that they're beautiful with like a really light layer, but as soon as you start kind of going over and over your skin with it, it starts to look really kind of like thick. It starts to kind of emphasize like your peach fuzz, you know, it kind of does that. So I definitely like to use a lighter hand with this kind of powder. And what I do, again, I get this just really, really lovely veil. And so long as I work it in, I feel like I get the best kind of like blurring effect. So let's do some more close-ups here. Now, I feel like in terms of color, that this powder is very translucent. I don't feel like it's darkened or lightened my foundation at all, but in terms of like coverage or texture, I do feel like it makes my um, foundation underneath look just a little bit thicker. So my skin just looks a little bit less natural, if you will. So if you're going for something with like a light coverage and you wanted your natural skin to kind of peek through underneath, this is going to camouflage that a little bit more. So the coverage to my face is a little bit heavier, but I don't feel like it's actually alter the color of my foundation. I hope that makes sense. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just do a check-in and give you um, kind of like my final thoughts at the end of the day. And we'll see how this powder wears together. I'll see you soon.
Hey guys, it is about 12 noon, so I thought I would do a check-in. I probably forgot to mention when I started uh, filming this morning, that was at around 8 o'clock in the morning, so it's been about four hours since this powder has been on. And I think I'm seeing what I've seen when I've worn this powder previously, in that I have a nice blurred effect. I think it does a good job at that, but it just makes my makeup appear thicker. It's like it almost adds, as if I were to put on like a powder foundation on top of my liquid foundation, like it has a thickness to it, which is only really bothersome around the areas of my face that are a little bit oily because I think it then mixes with my oil. It starts to look a little bit like cakey. So right here on my cheek, I feel like the powder still looks really great, has a great blurring effect. I think around my eyes, it's okay. Like it still has a nice kind of blurring effect. But on my forehead, I feel like it's emphasizing my lines a little bit. And definitely around my nose and my mouth, all of this just looks a little bit cakey. And I'm wearing a foundation, my Clay de Peau The Foundation, that is one of my all-time favorites. I've been wearing it a lot this past month or so, and it just looks absolutely flawless. It's just when I put this foundation on top of it, where it just starts to look a little bit cakey around uh, the mouth and nose area. So I know it's not the foundation. I've used other powders on top of it, and I feel like this powder looks great on the drier parts of my skin, but it's just around this area where I've used the powder and it just starts to make it look like thick. So this is the same experience I've had with this powder in the past. You know, I just wanted to keep testing it so I can give you the best insight into this powder and I seem to be seeing the same results. So I think I can confidently say that it looks great on the drier parts of my face, but it doesn't look great on the oilier parts of my face. And I feel like for a powder, you really want it to look good on the oilier parts of your face. That's kind of the reason why you powder is like you kind of want to keep that under control yet it's just sort of making that area look cakey. So that's my assessment so far. Let's leave this powder on for, let's say, another four hours, and I will be back at around four o'clock for my last check-in. Hey guys, it's about 4.30, so it's been another four and a half hours. So I've had this powder on for eight and a half hours total, and it hasn't changed much since my first check-in. So I feel like it looks really, really smooth on uh, like the drier parts of my face, so like my cheek area, and like around my eyes it looks okay. It just looks, like I had said before, it just looks thick and it's made my foundation look really thick just right around my oilier areas, my nose and my mouth. Um, the one thing maybe that I've noticed since my first check-in is that it is uh, caking up a little bit on my forehead and I have to admit I'm not sure if I checked this area at my first check-in so I don't know if this was already occurring or if this started happening since then but I'm gonna try and zoom in here and just show you. It looks a little bit like textured over here, just along my hairline on my forehead here. And it just looks like it's made my foundation kind of cake up and break up a little bit. And again, this is that Clay de Peau V foundation that I've worn a lot over this past month and it's never done this before. So I can say pretty confidently that this is definitely the powders doing. So all in all, I think this powder is okay. I would just be careful using this around areas where you have any lines. I do feel like it sort of emphasized my lines on my forehead and my laugh lines here, um, but that's something I noticed pretty much right away. It's not something that happens or gets worse as the day goes on, um, but it does a really, really nice job of buffing out my cheek area, which is really nice. I'll probably use it just for that if I feel like this area kind of just needs a little bit of blending, if it needs to be diffused. It, it does give kind of a nice blurred effect but I'm definitely gonna stay away from powdering this area because I just feel like it immediately starts to look cakey and thick. And I would also suggest, because this powder is so, so fine, I think less is more. My experience with really fine powders, it seems like logically, because it's so fine, you'd be able to use more. You'd be able to layer it on nicely. But because it's so fine, I feel like it almost like, uh, like if you were to touch confectioner sugar, like, that is such a finely milled kind of sugar. It's so powdery, and that's what you make frosting out of because that's what it turns into very, very quickly. That kind of paste, and all you need to do is add just a little bit of water, and that's what happens. And I feel like that's what the oils on my face did. It just sort of turned 
this powder kind of into a paste, if you will, which is what I think is giving it this sort of cakey appearance. So that's been my experience with like these really, really fine, fine, super soft, silky powders is that you really just have to be careful with the quantity that you use. So I would use definitely a light hand, but if you have really smooth skin and it's very normal, I don't think you'll have a problem with this powder at all. You'll probably be able to buff it as much as you want all over and it'll probably just re look really, really blurred. And I think for dry skin, it's been okay for me. All right guys, I hope you found that helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Let me know down below in the comment section if you've purchased this powder, what you think of it. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.